Polly. Welcome to Dandelion Stitches and fourth winter. Let's have a little look at how beautiful it is out here. I'm walking towards our labyrinth. wanted you to see how beautiful it is. I know it's April, but it's such heavy wet snow and it's so beautiful. Dandelion! Good girl! from the frozen tundra. Can you even? I mean, oh boy. Well, you know, you just got to take it as it comes. And, and it isn't going to be any less snow if I hate it. So I'm just going to enjoy it. It's beautiful. So <clears throat> anyway, welcome. <laughs> welcome to, to the Midwest, to, uh, to dandelion stitches. If you're new, if you're not, welcome as always. Uh, today we're going to do a little bit of uh, bouncing around, um, trying to decide how I can explain how this came to be. Okay, um, spring is coming <laughs> and summer. Believe it, it will happen. And we do a lot of out sitting outside. I meditate outside frequently, um, daily if it's not scorching outside and we sit, we have bonfires and, you know, the kids come over and we all sit in the grass and, um, I just got real motivated that we should have quilts to do that with. And then I started watching 1883 and just fell like a rock into the quilt sea. Like now I just, I need to have quilts, like awesome quilts for like everything, tablecloths, picnic blankets just instead of looking at them and like living with them making them part of our our daily um situation i so i tend to do this i tend to get like all obsessed about something and then get going um so anyway i was watching fat quarter shops videos and uh, someone challenged Kimberly to do a video or do a quilt using one layer cake. And she did, and it was awesome. And, and she did it really quick, and I thought, okay, let's do that. So I had some fabric. I, I don't have it with me because now it's the quilt. But um, it's this Newport by Moda. Um, let me say before we even get started any farther, this is not my jam. This fabric is not my jam. And you, per Kimberly's quilt with like one layer cake, spit the words out, Holly. Um, you make hourglass blocks and then she kind of had a, a way to make them all happen. But the idea was really you just random you know you just throw them kind of up there random well I don't do random so very well and I got the blocks done and I put them all up on my design wall and I moved them around oh gosh a couple hundred times and I just there was like no way that I could put it together that I loved it there was nothing so finally I took them all down and I just put them up randomly and I still don't love it but it will make an awesome blanket for sitting outside or you know, doing, doing whatever. So first thing I'm, I'm going to just walk you through is the hourglass block. Um, it's super simple. I mean, whew, boy, it doesn't really get much more simple than this, but just, you know, in case we're going to do the hourglass block. And then, um, someone, Sue Fisher, <laughs> Sue Fisher, um, asked if, uh, I would do a video on how I spray bait glue based my quilts. 
So then we're going to do a little bit. Um, I took a video of us spray basting the quilt. And um, that will be today's thing. It's not bound yet. Um, but I still don't like it. Well, I like it a little better now. I don't know. You know, sometimes you just got to live with stuff. But anyway, let's get on to the, the hourglass block. And then we will go to... Um, the glue basting and then I will come back and just say howdy and bye okay be right back this is an hourglass square it is very simple and if any of you are watching and you are advanced quilters I apologize I am not and so it is little things like this that make me happy uh, I am using 10 inch squares layer cakes um, you can certainly cut your own 10 inch squares but um, using a layer cake makes it super simple. So what we're going to do is take two squares, one light and one dark. Um, contrast is sort of a key here. And I am just going to cut two at a time. You know me, I, I really like um, making things quick and easy. I'm gonna do it on the back side so that I don't have any um, weird optical illusions that sometimes prints make. Like you think you're seeing the middle, but you're not. So then we're gonna just cut it up through both of them all the way down diagonally. And then we're gonna I'm going to turn it because I'm not so great at cutting from the other direction and just line those little dudes back up again. And find those corners. Okay. So now we have all these little these little guys. So we're going to line them up. Are we seeing? Yes, we're seeing. Okay, like so. like so so then we're going to flip this one over and we're gonna sew along this line and then we're gonna flip this one over and we're gonna sew along that line and we're gonna do the same thing with the other four that we have left so I'm going to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch those seams and I will be back. All right, so here we are with our nifty little cut, cut, cut thing. Uh, it's got a name. It's a blade saver. Purplehobbies.com. I'm always calling it that thing, but it does have a name. So getting out the pressing mat. Never, 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 never put your wool mat on top of your cutting board, your self-healing mat. Always put something in between or you will get a, um, a bump. It will, it's just not good. <laughs> I learned that from experience. Like, why does my mat have a bump in it? Oh, that's why. Okay, so we're just gonna quickly press the seams to set them. I did um, the whole block so that's why we have more than necessary. Okay, so now we're going to open them out and press to the dark. Make sure the 
this is yes okay when you are sewing um something like this where the beginning of your seam well honestly i use it for almost everything but when the beginning of your seam is such a little point i have a little chunk of fabric that i keep by my sewing machine and I start the seam on this piece of fabric and then just you know keep rolling it onto the point it will help for one thing if you, sometimes your sewing machine will cause that little knot kind of on the bottom of of your fabric at the beginning of your seam so this will keep the knot on the am I not even yes um on the I, I don't even know what you would call this a header maybe um, but also it makes it much easier to slide that little point right up to the needle without it being sucked into the, um, plate, which, you know, happens. So now we have two sides. We need to line them up like so. So if I did this right, which it appears I did. The seams should just nestle right on in there, right up against each other. And then you just want to take a pin and stick it right in that seam. And now I'm going to go to the machine and stitch this one. Be back. So here I've got the little header thing attached. Toss that back over there. Set the seam. Pick a direction to press towards. And it's an hourglass block. Let's see when you put them up against another hourglass block. You can do all kinds of nifty, nifty things. Put some, put non hourglass ones in between them. You can do all kinds of fun stuff. But that is also, um, you will trim them down um, when you've when you're finished. Um, the back of my I don't see it now, but the back of my 10 inch layer cake container suggested that you square them up to eight and a half inches. So uh, that leaves, you know, cause you can see that there's, you know, there's a dog ear hanging out down there. And so that's it. That's the very simple, but kind of fun uh, hourglass block. So, hey, welcome to my living room. Hey. <laughs> Uh, we have no place to lay out a quilt to make this happen, so um, my husband brings in a couple of tables. That's him. That's Tom. Um, and we do it on these tables. This quilt happens to be the same size or close to the same size as the table, so that works out really well, but we've done bigger ones. Um, that is the backing, and it is laying face down, and I'm just taking some painter's tape and tape in the corners to kind of keep it secure. Um, we're not pulling it super tight, but you know, taut maybe is the best word. Um, and so I apologize. We both kind of looked like we were uh, rode hard and put up wet, but we were just outside and Tom's availability is limited. So we kind of hustled in here to do this. So this is the batting. And we're laying the batting out on top of the backing. Uh, we have found that it helps to get most of the major wrinkles out of the batting before we fold it up and start to glue it. Um, it's still going to wrinkle a little bit, but it's just, it's a little easier if you get the major ones out first. So now I'm folding and he's folding it up 
So we're going to go all the way up to the top and get ready with the spray base. That is 505 uh, spray adhesive. And um, I go, whoops, we need to ventilate. So I am going to open the front door so that we can get some fresh air in and not breathe too much of that in. So as you can see, we've got, um, we kind of have this down now. Bless his heart, he's so good about helping me with stuff like this. And he's way, way more of a detail person than I am, so it comes out way better when when he helps. So we're just laying out the batting, kind of smoothing it over where we've sprayed the glue. And now we're folding down the top edge because we didn't get to the top edge, so. Tom's spraying that away. I don't know if there's other kinds of spray glue. 505 is all I've ever used. I know that there are people who make their own and then it has to be heat activated, which I don't I don't get time for that. This is just so much easier. And the idea isn't that it's going to adhere the quilt forever. All it's doing is securing it the pieces of the sandwich together so that you can go ahead and quilt it. Just makes it that much easier doesn't move around so here we are Ooh, my messy bun just totally went rogue while we were outside <laughs> see he's so much more methodical than I am and so much more careful he would make a literally a fantastic quilter because math is his his jam I do have to say, batting has a tendency to wrinkle. It it will grab onto that um, that glue and just make wrinkles all over the place. So you do kind of have to be a little bit fussy, at least I feel like, with the batting. So here comes the top. And you can see that the batting and the backing are bigger than the top. And that's on purpose. Um, when you quilt, it does, it can stretch the top a little bit. So if you leave a little on the edge, it makes your life easier. At the end, I will trim this down a little bit because it's kind of excessively big, but... That's why it's bigger than the top. Lifting up the bottom so we make sure that we've got the glue evenly distributed. I tend to go squirt, 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 and then Tom goes systematically down. <laughs> down. It works fine. Both of our systems work fine. One table is slightly taller than the other table, so there looks like there's a kind of a big bump in the middle, um, but it all kind of comes out when I move it. There's way too many light pieces at the bottom and too many dark pieces at the top and I don't really love the tan oh hey <laughs> I don't really love the tan pieces but 
like I said, it's going to be good. It's going to be a great functional addition to our family. And that's it. That's all it takes to spray baste your quilt. So here we are. She's not bound yet or quilted, but um, I hate her, you know, a little less. Part of it's just because I did it. You know, if someone else did it, I'd be like, oh, look at that, we're going to do that. And, but I did it and, you know. So she's going to be about 48 by 57. Again, no, no sashing, no borders. It's just one layer cake and um i i i got it was a 108 i don't remember who makes it um i wasted 108 on it because sure, sure as heck didn't need it i only needed half of it but you know whatever and i'm gonna bind it in this so that's it for today um i i'm not 100 percent sure what next week's gonna bring I'm starting to work on a couple of little secret projects that I can't share with you until a little bit later. Secret. <laughs> um, but anyway, that's it for today. I hope you guys are all fabulous. I hope spring is treating you, you know, really well. And um, that if you're getting weird snow like this, that you just enjoy it. Because it really is beautiful. So be well, be safe, and I'll see you next week. Bye.